Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today we have another very special episode. Today we're talking about the carrot-mediated reduction of ketones. Now, if you're like me, you might be extremely skeptical of the claim that carrots are able to reduce ketones. Um, so someone in the Discord brought up this Organic Chemistry Portal link saying that carrots could reduce carbonyls, and we're all like, oh, of course, another bogus paper, there's no way that this could be real. And a couple people are like, well, this is so easy to test. I might as well just try it. Okay, like, what does it take? We have some random ketones in the lab. Carrots are around. You can find carrots. Okay, how are we going to stir it? You know, they figured out the logistics. And a couple people really made this happen, okay? So I was going to do a toxic video about this, saying, like, how ridiculous this is. But, you know, it looked, it looked like, pretty sketchy. And it turns out that it's not. So, uh... The origin of this was a member of the Discord named Sinister Rectus. They found this paper, they linked it to us, and the DOIs to the two papers that are discussed in the Organic Chemistry Portal are shown here. I'll also include a link to the Organic Chemistry Portal. If you haven't checked out the site before, the guy that runs this is really cool, and he makes a really great free resource that you just get to use. Okay, so the concept of this paper, as summarized in an editorial piece by Ben List, the Nobel Laureate of 2021, along with Dave McMillan, is that there is this NADH reductant in the carrot. NADH is, you know, a reductant used to mediate a lot of reductions in biological processes. And the idea is that the carrot has some of that, and that can react with certain things that could be reduced. And so if you stick a ketone in there, someone figured you could do this. Now, I don't know who figured this out. I don't know if they came to the lab high one day or something, but someone decided this reduction isn't working. I'm going to use a carrot. And... You know, if someone said that, I would probably tell them to come back when they're sober. However, this person, in their ultimate wisdom, ended up being correct. And so the idea is that you take a ketone like this one here, and you can, you know, with decent enantioselectivity, reduce the ketone to the corresponding secondary alcohol. Okay, and so the setup for this reaction is shown here. You can see this beaker. There's a couple tubes to prevent the carrot shavings from getting stuck and so that the thing can still stir. And you just let this stir for a couple days, maybe up to five days, depending on the ketone. So uh, if you want this to work, you need to use, you know, decently high carrot loading for your reaction. And it works better if the carrot has high surface area based on our anecdotal results, as well as based on the reports of these authors. So the first experiment was done with acetophenone. And so the first member of the Discord uh, did this reaction where they cut up a bunch of carrots and they mixed it in a beaker for 72 hours. At room temperature, they add a little bit of ethanol, which just helps dissolve the ketone. If the ketone's not very soluble, it won't work as well. And they just stir this for several days at room temp. Now, in this case, we're not going to be able to get a reported isolated yield. It would be a bit unfair to expect them to use uh, university resources to actually isolate these secondary alcohol products. But it is a, an amazing effort to show that if you do try and repeat a reaction, you can really tune out whether or not the chemistry works. Okay, so I'm impressed. I am really impressed that this works. Here on the left, you can see the starting material. Here you can see the crude reaction mixture after 72 hours. You can see that there's still unreacted starting material. This yellow peak is likely just carotene in the solvent front from the carrots. And then down here underneath, you can see this little spot, which is likely the product. You can see that it also stains to KMNO4, which suggests that there is an oxidizable functional group. Perhaps it's an alcohol. So after 48 hours, they weren't able to see this very much. Um, however, they have NMR data to back this up. Now, the reported yield and the reported EE from this paper uh, are a reported yield of 73%, as well as a reported EE of 92%, which is just, that just stands for enantiomeric excess, which is what the excess of this enantiomer is over its mirror image. And so here's the crude NMR. They didn't provide a raw NMR uh, of the starting material, but you can see here that we have the secondary CH, the methine, proton adjacent to this alcohol here. That's why it's a quartet split by the CH3 here into a quartet. Additionally, you can see this doublet of the CH3 split by the alpha methine proton, as well as the CH3 of the unreacted acetophenone. And so you can see partial conversion. And in this case, the low conversion is likely due to the poor surface area of the carrots. Now, in our second case, we have a much finer graded carrot. And the member in the Discord that did this one uh, use 27 grams of carrot with one gram of starting material, quite a lot of starting material. And you might wonder, well, why did they use 27 grams of carrots? The original paper used two millimoles with something like 140 grams of carrots, which is a lot. 
but the rationale for why they used 27 grams of carrot was that was how much carrot would fit into their tea strainers, which is just, I love this. So amazingly enough, with one gram of starting material and 27% or 27 grams of carrots, they were able to observe like over 50% conversion, which is hilarious. It's hilarious that in 48 hours, you could get that high of a reduction of a ketone with friggin' carrots. I, I absolutely couldn't believe it, okay? So the first person who did the first one, I was quite I was quite pleased with those results, but these results are even more confidence inspiring because they did this on a substrate that wasn't even reported in the original paper and it worked. So this is a this is a method worth considering if you need to do an enantioselective reduction. Now, if you're trying to get the opposite uh, isomer, you might have to go and get a carrot from a parallel universe, but hey, you take what you can get. You take the wins you can get, right? Okay, so this is the NMR of their starting NBOC pyridinone, pipiridinone. You can see there's two CH2s, and in this case, they don't have too much of a chair or boat confirmation. So you can see that the CH2s on each um, position are more or less identical for these two spots and for these two spots. So you don't have any like axial equatorial protons, so it simplifies it a lot. However, in the product, once it's reduced, you have uh, different chemical shifts for each of the CHs, so it gets a little bit more complicated. But if we go back, you can see these two peaks are here. That's the starting material. You can see those two peaks in the product, as well as new peaks um, resulting from the CHs of the product. Okay, so this chemistry does work. Surprisingly enough, you can take carrots and you can take ketones, literally just mix them in water without any other fancy reagents, and it will slowly reduce the ketones to secondary alcohols, which is absolutely astonishing for me. So the summary of this is that the carrot chemistry legit works. Uh, it has impressive uh, enantioselectivity. You know, this type of EE is actually pretty decent compared to a lot of the contemporary methods that use super duper fancy reagents and catalysts. And despite the fact that this greatly resembles alchemy, members of the Discord were able to prove that this is reproducible chemistry. Um, you know, it would be good if you could see this chemistry get developed to quantitative conversion and even higher EEs. But given that carrots are used as the starting material, who cares? Just push material. Carrots are carrots. They're everywhere. Everyone has carrots. So I'd like to thank the members of the Discord who suggested this. And if any of you want to get involved in reproducing other chemistry that seems fishy in the future, I'd really encourage you to join the Discord. If you haven't checked out the Discord uh, already, there's a lot of fun stuff going on all the time. I'm usually in there talking with people every day. And it's a really fun time to share ideas, solve problems, and just work together on becoming better scientists. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on the reduction of ketones using carrots. It would really help out this channel if you left a like and subscribed. And I hope you have a great day.